Have you ever wondered how to build trust and rapport with your clients to ensure long-term success in your coaching business? When we return, we'll dive into the essential strategies for establishing and maintaining strong client relationships. Welcome, everyone. I am Rashida Green, founder and CEO of Get Coaching, the host of the wonderful Mompreneur HQ community, and the creator of the Digimompreneur Academy. I am so excited to have you here with me today as we explore the crucial strategies for building client trust and rapport. As mom entrepreneurs, creating a strong connection with your clients is very vital for ensuring long-term success and satisfaction in your coaching business. Let's dive into the techniques that will help you establish and maintain trust and rapport with your clients with today's topic, From Connection to Commitment, Building Lasting Client Relationships. Now, I'm speaking as a business coach to other coaches. However, building a lasting connection with your clients is a feat for all, basically. It can help and benefit each and every one of us in building our businesses. So don't close your eyes and your ears off when you because of the topic, but make sure you're tuning in to understand how you can build lasting relationships with your clients. If you are joining us live, make sure you put in the comments wherever they may be of uh, your name, hashtag live, your name and where you're uh, calling in, uh, tuning in from. If you're watching a replay, hashtag replay, do the same. Let us know because we want to know how far and wide the reach of the Mompreneur HQ is. So we would love for you to put that in the comments for us. Now, if you don't already know, I generally drop some nuggets. So I want you to have a pen, paper, or digital device ready so that you can write down any of the nuggets that you get from today's training. If you have particular ahas during the show, definitely go ahead and drop those in the comment. We comments we'd like to. Um, be able to look at those and get excited and motivated because you are actually benefiting from the information that we are sharing with you. Also, might as well go ahead and leave your questions. If you have questions during the show, drop the questions in the comment field and we will leave no question unanswered. All right. Are you ready to get going? Because I am building client trust and rapport and the keys um, that we're going to talk about for long-term coaching success. The first thing we want to start with is establishing initial trust, right? Because it can be, depending on your platform, the first six seconds, some say the first 11 seconds, you know, it just depends because our um, attention span has shortened so swiftly um, that really it's the matter of scroll. If you see something Three seconds, boom, you're moving on, you know. So establishing that initial trust up front is like the foundation of any successful coaching relationship. And building trust starts from the very first interaction with your potential clients. When you're building this trust in that initial trust you're establishing, you want to be transparent. You want to be open and honest about your coaching process, whatever your fees are and what the client can expect, because transparency helps set the stage for a trusting relationship. You know, in a sense of where you are establishing your coaching presence, you want to clearly outline your coaching packages, your pricing and what each package includes on your website. Now, that is something that is arguable. There are people who decide have, who have decided, I'm not putting prices on. I want you to apply. I want you to get on the line with me so that I can actually speak to your specific issue and concern and get to know you and you get to know me as an individual. And, you know, because sometimes you shut yourself off to an opportunity because of the price when there are other things that can probably happen if you get on the phone, right? If you if the price is too much for you or it's not in your budget at this time, actually getting on the line, you may find out that they have payment plans. You may find out other payment options that are available. Any of those things or scholarships. There are some coaching businesses that issue scholarships for their clients. You know, that's why sometimes it is better to get on the line with the coach to find out more about their program versus saying, oh, it's a five-figure investment. I'm not interested. Okay. So that's one of the things that you want to do as a coach establishing trust and, or as a business owner looking to establish trust with your potential clients, 
is by being transparent. You know, during your initial consultation, you want to explain your approach and what the clients can expect from working with you. Another thing you want to do in establishing that initial trust is show empathy and understanding, right? They're coming to you because they have a need. You, you want to demonstrate genuine care and concern for your client's challenges and their goals. Listen actively and validate their feelings. One way example would be that during your first session, take the time to understand your client's current situation and express empathy for their struggles. You know, using words like, I understand how challenging it could be. I understand or, or I fully agree. Or if you've had that same experience, you can even say, you know, I felt the same way, right? And then just go in there and, and add in that I'm here to support you through this journey. That is empathetic. You know, that em that's showing empathy, uh, a level of understanding. And then, you know, you can provide your social proof. You can share testimonials, case studies, and success stories from your previous clients. Those can be on your website or on your sales pages, or you can save it for a special presentation or a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one conversation with your potential client. But social proof really helps to build credibility and trust because now you have evidence of things, um, of you, uh, your accomplishments and clients who experience success with you. As I mentioned, you can do that on your website or you can actually just do that um, through social media profiles and any other medium that you can think of that's going to highlight the transformation that your clients have experienced by working with you. Now, another way to build up this connection and change it to a commitment is by building a strong rapport. We talked about how you can make that initial impression, that first impression, that lasting impression. And now we're talking about building a strong rapport. Now, once your initial trust is established, focus on building strong rapport with your clients. And that rapport creates a positive and collaborative coaching environment. What you want to do is find that common ground, identify the shared interests and experiences to create connection with your clients. Now, if you're sitting there going, I have no commonality with this person. You know, a couple of sessions back, we talked about who you want to work with and who you don't want to work with. So if there are some things that you, some criteria for the type of person that you want to work with, and there's this person that you have no connection with, and you really can decide, if I have no connection with this person, is this going to be a rough relationship? Am I just taking this client on because I just want to get a paycheck? And you really have the opportunity to think about what it is that you want to do from that point. But honestly, if you create this connection with your clients, it really can help to build rapport. And again, makes the coaching relationship more comfortable. If you discover that your client also enjoys reading self-development books, then guess what? You can share your favorites your favorite books with them and discuss key takeaways. And this is, again, helping to establish a relationship because now it's not you being a coach. You know, it's about you being my coach or you being my coach who also likes these things that I like. So that is a good way in finding common ground is a good way to build trust and rapport. All right. Another thing you want to be is authentic, of course. Show your true self and let your personality shine through. Authenticity helps clients to feel more connected and comfortable with you. If you share personal stories and experiences that are relevant to your client's situation, this helps them to see you as relatable and a trustworthy coach. Again, we're finding ways to build a rapport, right? We already had the initial trust building exercise. Now we're building rapport, establishing us as, I, I, I want to say equals, that I experienced the same. You cut me, I'm a, you cut me, I'm a bleed too. We have these commonalities. And when you're authentic and you're telling your client, put, talking to a potential client or a client, and you're sharing a same thing that they're going, that they're dealing with, and you're be, uh, relatable with them, you're actually coming out, uh, coming across 
as someone who was, hey, just like me. And then it becomes the issue, a matter of if you can do it, then I can do it too. And that helps to get your client engaged with you and motivated to want to work with you and potentially for the long term, right? Now, if you are enjoying what we're saying, if you're getting some nuggets, make sure you drop them in the comment field so that we can cheer you on as you're getting the nuggets that you need out of today's lesson. Now, another thing we want to talk about in building rapport is something that we talk about in business in general. Maintain consistency. You got to be consistent. Be consistent in your communication. Be consistent in your actions. Be consistent in how you show up because consistency helps to reinforce the trust that we talked about, the established trust in relationship. It helps to in reinforce the rapport and reliability. I can depend on you. You want to always start your starting in your coaching sessions on time. Why? Because then they're going to get the hint. They're going to read the room. They're going to know, okay, if I don't show up on time, I'm going to get this email. Session has started. You have five minutes before this, um, before the Zoom will be closed. You know, whatever the case may be, your policy would be. Um, okay, now our session time has ended, or we are ra you wrapping up the session at five minutes too, and then they're trying to give you all the stories. And you have to be able to close that conversation. And then they'll get the hint. They'll notice that, oh, this is something that's going to be a regular. Again, if we stay consistent with it, it won't be like you're just trying to rush them off because you have somewhere to go or because you have another client. It'll be because that's my practice. That's my policy. This is how I run my business. And so they'll get to know that, again, they'll get to know you more by the way that you handle your sessions and how you follow through on commitments and promises that you make to your clients. All right. Now, our third point for today in our topic of from connection to commitment, building lasting client relationships is communicating effectively. Now, we tend to have challenges in this area because, you know, when you're dealing with people online, Everyone has their own communication style and even language barriers that may prevent um, an easy, smooth uh, conversation. But effective communication, no less, is still the key to maintaining trust and rapport throughout your coaching relationship. You want, again, as I mentioned earlier, active listening. Practice active listening by fully focusing on your clients, understanding their perspective, and responding thoughtfully. During sessions, you want to listen carefully to your client's concern and ask those clarifying questions, right, to ensure that you understand their needs and also so that they know that you're listening. So one question you could ask is, can you tell me more about what you mean by feeling overwhelmed? Or can you tell me more about that? What is that they're saying that you want more clarification on so that you can get them to repeat it? And then they're like, oh, girl, she was listening. She just missed that one part or, you know, um, really get the idea that you were paying attention. Another thing that you want to do in part of, as part of the communicating effectively is to provide constructive feedback. You want to offer feedback that is specific, actionable, and delivered with empathy, right? We don't want to say things like, oh, that was wrong. Oh, that was totally wrong. No wonder your business failed. What? Who said that? Who says that? Right? You don't want to say things like that. It needs to be specific, actionable, and delivered with empathy. Or what we would say in church, you got to say it with love, right? You, you, if, especially if it's constructive criticism or feedback, you do not want them to become defensive about what you're trying to get talk to them about. You want them to be receptive so that they can change or grow or get the transformation that you're that they came and they, that they sought you for. So you want to definitely give construction feedback, constructive feedback that's going to help your client grow and improve. And so you could say something like, I've noticed that you tend to procrastinate on tax on tasks that seem overwhelming. Let's explore some strategies to break those tasks into smaller more manageable steps. Right. You've listened to what they said. You're providing feedback that you notice that they procrastinate on a specific task. Right. And then you actually come with some type of action item or action steps to try to get them to 
have a transformation in that area. You want to encourage open communication, right? Create a safe space where clients feel comfortable sharing their thoughts and their feelings with you. Again, you're not a therapist. Don't get it twisted. You, But you still want to have that open communication that they would be able to, fit, to, to tell you the things that they need to tell you in order to move past those things and get towards the goal um, that they set out to achieve by working with you. You want to encourage them to ask questions and provide their own feedback because you want to hear about their feedback as well. How do they feel about the information that you're sharing with them? That you have to have open communication because if they feel like they can't talk to you about that comment you made or that assignment you gave, or if they felt you were abrupt, or if they felt like you might have shown a little bit too much tough love, you want to have an open communication with your clients so that they um, are able to have that conversation with you and not hold it in because you hold it in, you want it with them one star Google reviews. Don't do that. Make sure that you have the open communication at the at the end of each session. Ask your clients if they have any questions or if there's anything else they'd like to discuss. So make sure now you, you ask me these questions, make sure it's not at two minutes before closing, right? You want to build it into the conversation, into the coaching session so that they have that time to speak and share with you. And you're not shutting them down after you don't ask them a question when it's two minutes to go. That's not nice. So you can say stuff like, is there anything else on your mind that you'd like to talk about before we wrap up? That's the cue, before we wrap up. So that's an opportunity there. All right. And the last point I want to make for connection to commitment is maintaining long-term relationships. Now, we've been talking about trust, establishing trust, building rapport, having a communicating effectively. And now we want to maintain that long-term relationship because building a long-term relationship relationship with your client is essential for sustaining your coaching business and ensuring ongoing success, right? If you have that client for a long time, there's a number of things. They That means they love you. They're going to stay. They're trying to achieve something. They're really goal oriented and they want you to want to continue to work with you till they get through to their success. But, you know, it leads to the other things we talked about earlier about testimonials, right? You, you get to get that positive testimonial that you can share on your website and on your social media, that social proof, right? Then you also may get referrals because now they love you and they want everybody else to join in on the fun, right? So they will send you some referrals based on your experience, their experience with you. So there's definite benefits to establishing and maintaining long-term client relationships. Now, of course, if your business happens to be a 12-month program, if your program happens to be a 12-month program with a certification or a graduation, and after the 12 months is done, the 12 months are done. But I would implore you to create an environment for the alumni of your program where they can still be a part, not maybe not at the same investment, but still be a part and be in your world and nurture them because there may be some other products coming down the pike that you can um, transition them into. That they, you know, because once you have your fans, people who love you, the, they love your programs, they love the products that you put out and they've gotten success and they benefited from all of the uh, knowledge that you've shared, they're going to want more. And if you find that you can provide them that information or that course or that program that's going to keep them engaged and in your world, then that's going to be what you need to do to be able to grow and maintain those long-term relationships. And one of the things you can do up front is just to follow up regularly. Check in with your clients before the sessions or between your sessions, if you're doing every other week or only once a month, whatever it is. Offer them support and show them that you care about their progress. Uh, you can send a quick email or a message a few days after a session to show, to see how they're doing with their homework assignment or the assignments or tasks that they left off with. You can ask them um, any questions, have them ask you any questions, you know, or just simply say, just check in and see how you're doing. And that's it. You know, following up is an actual opportunity 
to just stay in their ear, so to speak. Another thing you want to do in maintaining long-term relationship is recognize, right? Celebrate those milestones. Acknowledge your client's achievements and progress. You want to cel celebrating those milestones reinforces their efforts and motivates them to keep going. And when your client reaches a significant goal and send them a congratulatory email or a message or a IM or a DM or a, a box of message or a physical card or something that they can get in the mail from you congratulating them on their success, right? Congratulations on launching your new business. You, congratulations on sale on sales for your new program. Your hard work has passed, uh, has paid off. Thank you for being a part of the family. You know, all of this, your one year mark with us. Thank you for being with us for one whole year. Those are all milestones to help celebrate your client that they would probably love to be able to have an opportunity to celebrate with you. So definitely want to do something like that. And as I mentioned, you want to offer continued support. So if you can provide ongoing support and resources to help your clients continue to their growth and development, even after the formal coaching engagement, again, it's just because they're not, just because they're not on the invoice anymore, just because, you know, they're not paying you for your services, so to speak. You can still share relevant articles, books, and tools that can help your clients stay on track and continue their personal and professional growth. You want you can even invite them to join, like I said, your alumni group for ongoing support. That is something that you can do that's really going to be impactful and have your client thinking to themselves, I've got me a winner and I'm staying and I'm going to follow this person. When I hear those stories, I'm like in awe. Um, when people come out with a program, it may not even be relevant to them, but the, their favorite coach comes out with a program. They'd be like, girl, you know, I got it. Girl, you know, I bought it. Girl, you know, I went through it because anything she drops, I'm going by. That's just plain simple because I know it's going to be good because I've worked with her and I know based on the established initial trust, the rapport, the um, communication. And she always has one of her coaches reaching out to me or whatever the case may be. And then the the, the things that she's done to maintain long-term uh, relationship, like acknowledges my, acknowledging my milestones and we keep keeping in touch with me, whatever she drops, I'm buying, right? So that's the kind of rapport and, and trust that you want to build with your clients because building client trust and rapport is essential again for long-term coaching success and although i'm speaking specifically to those coaches out there hey it works for anybody in business if you're doing a digital product business if you're doing a physical product business you too can acknowledge milestones hey i see that you bought this a year ago i hope that i hope that this is still working for you a month ago. It don't have to be a year when you're talking about products, right? I saw you bought this a month ago. Would you be interested in the, the pair pairing it with this gift, with this product, with this service, or here's this freebie for being on my mailing list. You're building up potential clients, right? So this is very important. And once you, by establishing initial trust and building this strong rapporting and effectively communicating with your clients and maintaining long-term relationships, you can create a supportive and impactful coaching experience for your, your clients. And that's pretty much what we all want. Because at the end of the day, sure, that one-on-one -on -one coaching package has expired, but how many times can you reach out to your client? How many times can you acknowledge and celebrate with them? It's not going to hurt you. It's going to take a moment. And even if you have your VA do it or an assistant do it, right? Someone who could just drop a note for you and have them go, oh, that was unexpected. Oh, that was nice. And actually reach out to you and get those things done. That, I mean, and, and acknowledge those milestones. That is just an awesome feeling from the client perspective. So as a coach, you want to make sure that you're, doing these things, right? I want to thank you so much for joining me today as we discuss the topic from connection to communication, building lasting client relationships. If you're ready to build a strong and lasting relationship with your clients, then start implementing these strategies now. 
Let's create a coaching business that not only thrives, but also makes a meaningful difference in the lives of our clients. Thank you so much for joining me once again. And until next time.